Hi, I'm Laura Coyle, and in this video, we'll be talking about the new feature in Adobe Illustrator Text to Vector. Now, this is a beta feature, but it's in the regular release of Adobe Illustrator 2024. And we'll be focusing specifically on the text to pattern feature in this video. Now you can make pattern fills using text prompts and artificial intelligence in Adobe Illustrator. So this is really interesting. And the results you get can be kind of hit or miss. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the panel. And I'll also show you some of my suggestions for text prompts and settings that can hopefully get you better results. And then finally, a little bit about editing the results. Here I am in a new document. And the first step is to open the text vector graphic panel, which you can get from the window menu down at text vector graphic. You can also access these options in the properties panel, but I like to have the full panel open here. Next, I'm going to choose pattern for the type. We can create other kinds of content here, but for this video, we're just working with pattern. If you want more information about this feature here in the options menu, there's a link to the user guidelines. And then at the bottom, there's an information link that will take you to Adobe help documentation with all the details about this feature. Back up to the top, you'll see that this switch here for match active artboard style is dimmed. So that's not an option that we can use with pattern, but you can use it with the other types of content. So generally the first step with any of these types of content is to start with a rectangle or a container that you're gonna be generating in. So I'm just creating a rectangle there. And next you can use one of these sample prompts if you need to find this option, just go to the little light bulb icon, but I'm going to type in a prompt that I've copied to my clipboard here. Birthday presents, cupcakes, balloons, graphic, and simple. There is an option here, which we'll talk about in a minute to limit the number of colors. But for now, we're just going to do the straight out of the box results. So let's click generate. And I'll speed this process up in the video, but it generally happens pretty quickly. And I'm looking for just the standard results here with no settings so that we're all on the same page when I start talking about ways of making this work for you. First of all, I find the color generally to be sort of dull with these sort of weird dull background colors. And my biggest issue with the results is that the drawing is just not very good. <laughs> Understatement. And so my process here is to find ways of prompting and using settings to find some usable results that I can work with. But so far, this is not, not so good. <laughs> but let's talk a little bit more about the results so you know what you're getting here. Every time you click generate, you're getting three separate variations. And the first one will always be added to your swatches panel. Then when you click on the other two, as you click, they will be added to your swatches panel also. And I say this as a caution because when you generate a lot of pattern fill results, they stack up in your swatches panel and they will make your file size larger. So it's just something to keep an eye on as you're generating a lot of results. And you can just delete the ones you don't want. Another interesting thing about this is that let's go to the recolor artwork panel and you can see, even though it's a very dull color scape here, it's quite a lot of colors. Let me click on advanced options so we can see the panel. That's 37 colors. Click out of there. So really the results are not all that great and they will be harder to edit because of the number of colors. There's a lot of colors in that result. 70. 70 colors there, many of them looking like duplicates. So we do have the option to limit the color and we'll talk about that option in a minute. But just continuing on, let's go and look at this pattern, which is highlighted here in the swatches panel. To edit the pattern fill, I'm gonna double click on it and this puts us into pattern editing mode. I'll back out a little bit here so we can see the tile boundaries. Here's a couple of other things that happen by default. The pattern is a grid tile, it's square, and you can't change this option here. So you will always have a grid, so there's no offset options. The tile size will always be a square, 3.5556 inches, which I thought was an odd measurement, but then I looked it up and that's 256 pixels square. So this is what you get 
by default when you use text to vector pattern. Another thing that you'll notice, let's see, if I click on the background shape, you'll, you'll see when I move it aside there, we just have a lot of punched out background shapes. So this makes it hard to edit. I'm just gonna click delete there. And then there is weird <laughs> slicing up and grouping of all the art. Let me just zoom in there. So it's pretty, you know, it's horrendous <laughs> to try and edit this. And they're not even grouped. Well, nope, that's not even grouped. So you've got to sort of bear these things in mind. And it's with all of this that I started to think of ways that I could use this feature for the things that it actually can do for us. So I'll cancel out of here. We're going to go and look at how to limit the color. And I'll close the swatches panel. Here's the option where I can control the color and you can choose maybe a vibrant color palette here and you can choose to limit it to let's try 15 since we don't really want 30. That's still a lot of colors. And then I'll go ahead and with that setting, I'll generate again. And we'll see what vibrant color and 15 colors gets us. And I'll just speed through this part so we don't have to wait. All right, and here are the results. Definitely more vibrant. Drawing is not any better, but when you limit to 15 colors, things get simpler and there is some art here that you can actually edit. It's not quite as complex. Now there's one more option here that I wanna show you where you can actually specify the colors. So what I'll do here is just change this to none and then I'll be adding colors that I have on my swatches panel already. So I'll just choose a couple of these. Let's see, I'll get this color. And every time you wanna choose when you need to go back, hit the plus sign and then grab the color like that. And I think we're limited to five colors. And we'll see what happens with this. So we've got it set to none, 15 colors, and we've actually specified some colors. Now, another thing you'll notice is that those colors or those swatches that I had were all global swatches, but they will not be global swatches in the final result. So you won't have art that's attached to those swatches. And I'll speed through that. So now I see some of those colors, but you know, I don't know. Yeah, okay, that, that's looking a little bit more like it, but still <laughs> that doesn't resemble it at all. And the drawing is, has gotten crazy with a 15 color limit and four swatches that don't even match this result. So after all this frustration, I just decided to change my approach. So now I'm focusing on simpler prompts with simple shapes and simpler art like flowers, and then also really limiting the color. And what I'm gonna show you here is just a few prompts that were working for me. Um, this one, large flower background minimalist. So I'm really trying to let it know that I want it to be something sort of background if I can, if I can get it to understand that. Um, and then let's see, here's another one, rays of the sun exploding, which came up with this lovely kind of woodcut and the color is terrible, but we can easily fix that. And in this case, I used six colors uh, in the limit colors dialog there. Indigo Japanese paper background. I love these abstract shapes. They're slightly off, which is great. It's easier to get these than it is to draw them and they just look really cool. Uh, let's see, here's another one. Minimalist Japanese blue and green background floral simple, which just has a lot of charm about it and some cool flowers that if I can't use, I can at least use them as inspiration. And then simple tiny blue geometric floral. This one has some gaps and it's not really much of a pattern, but I don't intend to use these just straight out of the box. I'm gonna take them apart and, and work with them. And also I'm finding when I use color words in the prompts that I get better results. So here I've used the word blue and other places I've used just blue and green. One or two color words seems to focus it well. Here's another example of that green Japanese flower background. So here is a list of kind of the condensed version of my suggestions that you can pause here and take a look at. And while you're pausing, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can see my latest Adobe Illustrator tutorials. So let's take a look at what we can do here to edit these. And I'm gonna go back to this one because it's probably the simplest, the radiant rays of the sun exploding. And what I wanna do first is a quick 
jump into recolor artwork. That's going to help me to edit this. So I'm coming up here to the recolor artwork panel and let's get this out. And I'm just going to go into advanced options. I can see we've got, you know, a background color that's this color here. And then this darker gray that I couldn't tell where it is in here. And I don't really need to know because I think it's just a little fleck somewhere. So what I'm going to do is just take this color and put it right here dragging and dropping. And so now I have a two color pattern. I have this orange and I have this light gray here. And just for the sake of this, I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a darker color here so I can really see what that background looks like. And now I'll click OK to finish that. And the reason I did that is I just want to get rid of all of the blue in this pattern. And one nice thing about when you use recolor artwork on a pattern, it generates a separate pattern fill for you. So you don't mess up the original there if I needed to go back to it. Now what I'm going to do is just double click on this to go into pattern editing mode. And then remember what we saw before the background has this, you know, punched out shapes here. So it's not really going to be very helpful to us here. And I just want to get rid of it. First, let me undo that. What I want to do is select this blue color using the magic wand tool, which lets you select by color. So I'm tapping Y on my keyboard to get that. And I'm going to click on that blue. And I know that it will also pick up the other blue, wherever those little, remember that was a gray color that were little flecks in there somewhere that you could barely see. I just want to get rid of those. So I'm just going to tap delete. And there we have it. So now I have these nice shapes and I actually like the way this is one of those rare patterns where I just kind of like the, the way it looks right away. So I'm going to leave it like this and go ahead and just exit out of here. And now there's some usable art. Now this is still a pattern fill, but if I actually need the vector art, I need to take the pattern and drag it to the artboard. So let's do that. I'm just going to drag the swatch right out here. And then now I've got that sort of background free pared down art. The bounding shape, of course, is going to show us, you know, where the edges of the tile are. Um, but I can remove that, ungroup this and uh, group the flowers together however I want to use them however I want to. So there's one that we were able to edit. And then here's another one where I can use these flowers if I take them out of the background. So what I'm going to do is use the art that's here in the swatches panel and just drag it out to the artboard. And then I'll go into recolor artwork, advanced options, and just look at the color here. So we have 13 colors and let's see, here is the background color. I'm going to select the background color with the magic wand tool and I want to get rid of it. Um, and I also want to get rid of any color that is not really being used in here because sometimes there's tiny little flex that are not really part of the design. So one thing you can do here is use this magnifying glass button. So if I click on this, I'm kind of in magnifying glass mode, and then I can click on a color in the new column and that just flashes it in the design. So I know, okay, that's an important color in the design. That is this one right here. As much as I blink it off and on, I don't see it. Um, so that means that's one, this kind of weird green color. I'm going to merge that into the background color so I can delete them all together. Um, that's these flowers here. This is another one of those colors that you can barely find. There's a tiny little fleck right there. Um, that's this color. Let me cancel. I clicked too many times there. And then uh, this one with the magnifying glass, I don't see it either. So that's another one of those that I need to get rid of. Um, and then looks like the rest of these are prominent in the design. Yep. Okay. There's this one and then this one. Okay. So what I'll do is turn off the magnifying glass mode. And now let's see, there's my gray background color. First, I'm going to take this green color and drag it into the background row there. So it becomes the background color and it will get deleted when I use the magic wand tool. And then these right here are going to also be merged into that background color. And I don't see the design changing. So I think this is all going to work. All right. So let's go ahead, click OK to complete that recoloring. And then because this is a group, I'm going to use isolation mode. So I'll double click to go into isolation mode. 
And the reason I do this is because you can be here in isolation mode and not affect any of your other art. So I'll get the magic wand tool. The shortcut is Y. And oh, you need to double click on this and make sure that your fill color tolerance is set to zero. And that way you will get exactly this gray color and you won't loop in any other colors that are close to it. So I've selected it. I'm going to tap delete on my keyboard. And now all those background shapes and those little flecks are gone. So now there's nothing else I'm going to do here in isolation, but I'm just going to exit. And from here, what I can do is ungroup once. Looks like I still have all of the elements grouped together. So I'm going to ungroup again and then come in here and take a closer look at what we have. So this petal is, all of these petals are separate. Let's undo, undo, undo. They're all like that. Okay. So then I'll just grab these and group them. So I have one flower now. There's another one. This is separate. Group that. So I'll just go through and, you know, try to group these. And one thing that I've noticed, like there's a little thing where they melted together. So maybe there's another one of these, like this one right here that you could save and use and just avoid that one. Um, let's see some of when you're working it close to the edge, you might find, let's see. Yes. You're, you might find some pieces like this where they're actually grouped with other elements. And I guess that's just a pattern thing. So that's something you want to be aware of when you're going through here and trying to separate these out. But then once you do that, you'll have all of these elements that you can use in a new pattern. And the thing I really like about this is that when you have elements that came out of the same pattern, you know, there, there's some things that are slightly different about them. So this kind of donut target here is, looks like this one, but there's a little bit of a difference there. And these flowers are slightly different. There's some variation between these. And so that just makes them a little nicer to use when you're over in pattern editing mode, working on your new pattern and using tile types like brick by column. All right. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and it's given you some ideas of how you can work with the new text to pattern feature in Adobe Illustrator.